Um, I'm here with Marie today, and Marie, it was fascinating to meet you. It was amazing. It's 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 mind-boggling that you know somebody like yourself have had a great life, and now you're out there helping other people. Um, Marie, I wanted to know that you know people say you're tired, or you said you're tired. So what does that actually mean? Are you stopped <laughs> working at all, or That's made a billion dollars? It's or? an interesting. Hmm. It's an interesting, I guess, definition that I have of retirement. I was very fortunate in my life. I was in a position to retire at 33. I guess my definition might be a little bit different from everyone else's because, you know, my definition of it is, is not to stop but to continue to do what I love. And I feel I will do what I love for the rest of my life. So I guess it's a, it's a, a differing definition from what the masses think. And I guess that's also what I bring to business, a different way of thinking. It's also been such a pleasure to meet you and hear about your ideas and see what you were doing and to have that meeting of minds and thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, we can do that interview of mine later, but <laughs> for now it's all about you. So, um, so what do you do? Do you when you when your consultancy service? What does it do for companies and what can it do for companies? What's interesting is, okay, the whole aim of it is to instill a culture. Because when you instill a culture and people have a feeling and that connection with a company, and when you have world-class business standards, you tend to have generational business. So basically at the end of the day, it's to empower companies to have a system which is so good and that their clients love them so much that they will never want to leave them. So it's the ultimate customer retention system, if you like. And I like that culture because as far as I'm concerned with any business or any company or corporation or country that I consult with, it's not just the employees or the people in the business, it's also the staff, their family. It's also the customers, their family. It's a whole culture that I've created around the world. And you know, it's, it's a bit like you know, some, of, some of the best known companies in the world. How do they make you feel? So with instilling all of my experience and what I've done in a lifetime, it's taken me, you know, 23 and a half years to come up with this system. It's been a big part of my life. It's basically so that going forward, it's not even a legacy system, but it's a dynasty system. This is long term. This is getting deep into the culture. This is soulful. This is how it makes you feel. So uh, you go in as a consultant and then you help the companies transform their internal culture so that they can transform the external culture? Mm -hmm. Is that how it works? Yeah, that can be how it works. As you can see, <clears throat> I'm here at an event and I've been speaking quite a bit, so excuse me. And I, I also have asthma, so probably take a bit of an inhaler in a while, so excuse me about that. But yes, when I go into um, a, an entity no matter what, what it is. It's very important that you start from the inside out and not the outside in. It's, it's like in my career in media. I didn't learn it out of a book. I actually did it from the inside out as opposed to the outside in. So I think that's what gives me the right and you know, has earned me the respect to be a mentor's mentor and to be able to be in a position to train and to consult like this at high levels. So yeah, I think it's, it's very core. It's like center of the earth. You start at the inside, you get really deep and everything can evolve and progress after that. So I'm very mindful of not just the business and propelling profits in the business, which is hugely important, but also the people are treated right, the customers are treated right, how their family feels about the business. The staff must be treated exceptionally as well as the customers, and also it's how their families feel about the culture you're creating. It's not just about the business, it goes so much deeper than and when this transformation happens, what happens next? Well, the interesting thing is, what instills is, it's, a, it's almost like a deep cultural change. It's like how people react when you say the name of the business or the name of the person associated with the business. It becomes something different, it becomes something meaningful, it becomes, wow, this is, you know, your best friend for life. This is a connection, a relationship like family, and you don't want to break that bond. So for me, it's generational dynasty retention of customers because you treat them so well and you care about them so deeply, they never will ever want to go somewhere else. Give me a tip. I mean, what kind of change, what kind of treatment would we do to a customer so that they stay loyal to you? 
there's 105 steps to a system I implement and basically when it comes to treating your customer right, it's ultimate respect at every, every level. I mean, even from the second they walk in the door. What you normally find in, in businesses right now, I'm talking about physical stock business when you can walk through a physical door. I do this online and offline by the way. But that connection, that relationship is very important. Usually what happens is someone comes into an organization and they have to form a queue or whatever and it's like they're ignored and not acknowledged. And that's not respectful, because one of the forever method principles that I teach, forever, you know, there is a principle there on respect. It's basically as soon as someone is on your turf, basically in your home, which I consider your business as well, because that's how I feel about it, it's like family, they should at least be acknowledged. They should be respected and acknowledged. You want to find out their name. And also, like, you know, even if they're in the queue and they want to hand over, just use the hotel card here to say this is a a credit card, a bank card, a debit card, whatever it is, if they hand it to you, you take a quick flick at the first name and you go, Mark, thank you very much, whatever it is. It's, it's, it's taking an extra step. It's becoming aware, it's open your mind to taking an extra step that they weren't expecting because, let's be honest, around the world, my experience is that in places that haven't consulted and have not worked with me yet, their customer service sucks. So how do you plan to serve the 7 billion people because, you know, not everybody can afford to consult you? Well, it's like this. That's why I've got a different number of levels and ways that people can connect and work with me. Um, some, yes, are at a very high level, some are at an interim level, and some are at the introduction, the beginner's level. So they can actually afford to invest in themselves because at the end of the day, if they don't this, don't do this, they can't afford not to do this. Fantastic. And um, I've heard about this new program where you're trying to give away recycled iPhones. What's that mm -hmm. all about? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, Marie O'Reardon Planeteers Philanthropy is the charity wing of what I do. And basically, it's not me fundraising or collecting money, because I actually fund it personally myself. So what I do is I assign funding and I go, and either people, you know, if they, if they want to wanna give, iPhones, old iPhones, recycled iPhones, they can. Otherwise, I, you know, find ways to buy them in bulk so that they can go into third world countries. And I'm very fortunate that, you know, the, the person closest to me in my life is involved in education internationally. They have amazing methods of teaching children no matter how they want to learn. I know for myself I'm auditory, I'm very visual, I'm kinesthetic, and I'm auditory digital. So it's, it's, it's an interesting mix, and it was, it was a difficult time for me in school because people didn't understand how I learned. So they're able to recognize how children in underprivileged regions of the world actually learn. And an iPhone is an amazing tool. And it's basically, you know, no matter how they learn, there is a way on an iPhone for them to be educated. So, you know, I'm able to bring in the consultants from the educational point of view because I can afford to do that to advise me on how best to educate them. I've been volunteering abroad since I was 16 years old. It's something I've had a passion for since I was four when there was some tragedy in my family. And um, since I was 22, I've been able to fund philanthropic um, ventures abroad. And one of those was in Calcutta, India back in 1997. Got to make a, a documentary on street kids to volunteer in the slums and to work with Mother Teresa. And the last interview that Mother Teresa gave before she died was with me. So that had a huge impact on my life and it made me see that I was on path to give more and give back. And that it wasn't about me, it was about the people I could help. So I'm very excited about that. And, you know, I'm just so honoured that you were able to attend as well yesterday because last night um, I'm just so thankful to Unlimited Power Online because I was awarded the Middle East Award for 2011, their honorary award for Marie O'Reardon. Planeteers Philanthropy and particularly the nomination was for the iPhones project so um, it's you know I, I don't need the recognition but it's also also wonderful when people do recognize you and it's your peers and they feel you're doing something good and uh, it gives me the motivation to see that I'm on track I'm on purpose I'm on plan and I want to continue it and roll it out in as many more countries as I can. So when somebody gets an iPhone in a third world country how how do they change? How do you think they will change? And how will the transformation happen for them? What's really happening is, you see, access to technology is so vital if we want the likes of, I've been to Africa so many times, I've volunteered in Africa many times, I've made many documentaries in Africa. And I really feel, you know, the way forward of education right now, you know, in, in the Western world right now, we've got something really beautiful, and that's the iPad too. 
and it's wonderful. It's a little bit bulky and expensive for the likes of Africa because it's so new. You can't really get a lot of recycled iPads at the moment, even though we're onto iPad too. But still, it's rather difficult. What I'm finding is with the older models and the start of the iPod and the, uh, the, the iPhone revolution is that it's much easier now to be able to acquire and buy or have donated the first of the iPhones. So to answer your question in particular, basically here is a means, here, here is something in the palm of your hand that can change your life and it can open up a whole world of possibilities through the internet for education and even I've spoken to some of the top consultants in education in the world and they have rated even YouTube and applications um, so many of these apps that are available from Apple as some of the best tools to teach children who may never have been exposed to something like this before or may have difficulties in the classroom, come from an underprivileged background and who just see things from a different perspective um, instead of the classroom environment where basically at many times I've been told by the consultants it's sit down, shut up, do this and don't ask questions. Whereas with the iPhone mentality they have the freedom to learn how they want to learn. That's important to me. I didn't have that opportunity in school, you know. Um, what by, if you did? By the way I learn, I know, it's, it's unbelievable. It was difficult for me and I didn't have an opportunity in school to learn the way I like to learn and now I do and I want to help change how children are educated. So what's your take on giving away information? For example, most of the trainers and most of the educators and most of the professors of the world and most of the businessmen of the world feel that if they give away, give away a simple process or a recipe for success mm -hmm. or their you know food recipe for example which is you know sometimes they think it's very secretive mm -hmm. um, what's your take on giving away and if I, I don't know if, if it's positive or negative but mm -hmm. if it is positive what will it, it do to their business mm -hmm. I, I feel very strongly I, I travel around the world I've worked in 26 countries now and you were at a training that I did yesterday and I imparted in the time that I had as much information as possible because I really believe people should go and implement that informa information and it shouldn't be hidden or kept secret I don't believe in that I do however believe that if people you know, have a choice and they choose to invest in themselves that they can that there's an opportunity for them to take things to higher levels but sometimes maybe they're not ready for it but I've always believed and I have always trained and consulted and I love empowering people with information that they can implement from today in their life in their business in their family in their attitude in their mindset so I'm a great believer in letting the information flow so do I take that you you would encourage people to give away information which they know I encourage people to share information um, I guess, you know, I'm big on language patterns. People don't appreciate what they get for nothing. But if you're sharing information, you know, it's a, it's a simple language change and it um, makes the value appear, you know, more real, if you like. Because I feel there's great value in people who can share their expertise and share their information, share their knowledge with a greater audience, no matter where that audience is. There's universal themes all over the world. We're all human beings. It doesn't matter, you know, where we're living. I, there, there are so many universal themes with us as human beings that there's so much information that can be shared and it can have an impact on the other side of the world from where you are because of the internet. So what's your take on YouTube? Um, how does it help you learn and grow yourself? I love YouTube and I've loved it since it first started and I was actually a raving fan of YouTube before Google bought into YouTube and I think that was a very wise move by Google. Um, I think that was a very, very wise investment on their part. They are basically dominating the internet right now. It has helped me a lot because I'm very visual as well and I'm very auditory, so I can watch and hear something at the same time. There's like, I don't know how many videos are up on YouTube, but it is vast and basically anything that I would have difficulty before I go, oh right, I need to do this, oh, how do you do that? You know, it's there are so many how-to instructional videos on the internet, it's fantastic. I've had several accounts myself for video sites and I've been placing videos for years and you know, the, the, the rankings, the ratings, the, the way people are able to access the information as well through video has been very empowering and I've done whole systems um, online uh, through video 
and, uh, and I will continue to do so. In fact, I'm even ramping it up. I feel it's so valuable for people that I want to do more of it. Do you, do you think it's, it's a good tool for teaching other people? I think it's an amazing tool for teaching, uh, considering the fact that you're getting three elements of the learning curve, if you like. Maybe four, it depends on how you look at it. We've got the auditory, because you can hear it, you can see it, and you're typing, so you've got that touch, that kinesthetic value of the touch, because we need feedback. I'm very kinesthetic as well, I need that feedback, so even touching the keyboard is helping me to connect more to the information, which is helping me to learn. So I think it's an invaluable tool, and I will be a raving fan of YouTube, so long as they keep doing what they're doing in a good way and don't change it. <laughs> progress but don't change the fundamentals and keep it free and open for the world thank you so much Marie uh, it was lovely talking to you um, is there anything else you want to add yeah I just want to share that um, you know wherever you saw this video the man behind the camera has great vision I align with the, this person and uh, I'm very happy to um, to speak to you again to meet you in other countries and um, as I like to say, when it comes to success, it takes one to know one. Thank you very much. So thank you so much again, Marie. Marie, what's your email address for people to contact you on? Sure. I'll just give the website, which is Ideal Business Intelligence. So to follow on from that, the email address is very simply grow at idealbusinessintelligence.com. Grow at idealbusinessintelligence.com. Thank you for the opportunity. I didn't expect that. It's very much appreciated. And you can follow Marie on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. And I would strongly recommend to subscribe to her on Facebook. This is how you spell my name. It's an Irish name. It can be quite difficult for people. Marie, <coughs> M-A-R-I-E. And it's an Irish name, O-R-I-O-R-D-A-N. O apostrophe R -I -O -R -D -A -N. Thank you. And you will learn a lot of stuff in life. Thank you so much again, Marie. It's a pleasure.